Yo, 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 what's good, y'all? It's Sunny MF, and y'all already know I just killed my interview with Next Up, man. Make sure y'all tune in, because I'm Next Up. Welcome to the Next Up Studio. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Appreciate y'all for having me. So tell me, is it Sunny Motherfucker? <laughs> or what does that stand for? Depends who's asking, you know. Uh, <laughs> MF, you know, of course, you know, all our minds go to, you know, Motherfucker. But when I'm in a PG place, it is Mother's Favorite. <laughs> Interesting, how would you come up with that? I know. Uh, but my mama, she kind of just was like, MF, like, motherfucker. Like, how are you going to get to the White House with that? I ain't know going to the White House was the goal, but she said that. So I was just like, you know what? It's not motherfucker, it's mother's favorite. So she was like, oh, yeah, quick, I'm quick on my toes. <laughs> are you your mother's favorite? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the golden child. <laughs> I was about to say you called yourself the golden child the other day? Yes, I, I am the golden child for sure. Yeah. What makes you so golden? Tell me. Educate me. Sunny, you know what I mean? It's the name within itself. I, I just bring a light, you know what I mean? Pretty vibrant light, you know what I mean? And uh, I light up a room. <laughs> well, that's good to know. You are definitely multifaceted. You are a photographer, videographer, songwriter, rapper. So what else? Tell me more. Tell me more. I know there's so more. Many. I'm a uh, child of God. Uh, <laughs> First and foremost, I'm a child of God before anything. Or any of that. Nah. <laughs> and I'm a rapper first. You mean, I, I've learned all those skills just, you know, being a music artist and just learning how to do shit yourself. You just, you know, you start to become an entrepreneur within itself. So, rapping made me learn photography, made me learn videography, made me learn how to sound engineer, helped me learn how to write songs. So, these things just so happen to have a title for themselves too. So, uh, I like to combine them all and just say entrepreneur, you know, creative. Yeah, that's it. Creative. I'm a creative. <laughs> <laughs> what was the first thing that you did? Did you rap first? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Definitely rap first. First thing, for sure. Sing or rap? Probably the same thing. I think I sung first and I was like, okay, well, I can't sing, but I can match these words together, though. <laughs> How long have you been rapping? I mean, I set my first rap at, like, seven years old. Um, I went to my first session at, like, 16 and... Ever since then, just been going hard, you know. Has there been a moment where you were kind of gray, where you just didn't know what you wanted to do? Definitely. I've had plenty of moments like that. You know, I'm an artist. I'm sensitive about my shit, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I've definitely had moments where I was like, man, I don't even know what the fuck's going on. Felt like I was, you know, running on a treadmill, going nowhere fast. And that's what really, like, led me towards the songwriting lane because, I mean, I had to... I was falling out of love of becoming an artist because, I mean, I felt like I was had so many triumphs and trials and tribulations and all that shit. I was just like, I'm, I still love music, so let me still find a way to express myself to take myself out of it. So that w really what led me to songwriting because I still got a love for music. Even today, I love music. I'm back. I found my love all over again. I just had to find a new way to fall in love with the process all over again because the process felt like it was just taking so long and I started to just be like... You know what, man? I don't know. Is it in my cards? And I'm just like, nah, fuck that shit. I'm just going to learn a new skill and just go hard with that and just see what goes with that. But it's still all relative and, and being an artist in music. So. so how do you balance that lifestyle when you feel like you don't want to do it? What are some of the things that you do to get out of those poor habits? Smoke a lot of weed, you know. <laughs> That's definitely, I smoke a lot of weed, uh, <laughs> listen to beats, but really just smoke a lot of weed. Smoke a lot of weed, and when I can't, um, <laughs> and when I'm not creative in like writing, I'm like, damn, I can't write these bars right now. But I got a lot of shit I need to catch up on editing. It's still a creative, you feel what I'm saying? Sometimes I don't feel like editing, but I'm like, yo, I got these bars in my head, I gotta let this shit out. So at the end of the day, it's always a creative process going on, just maybe just not writing to you know not writing today or okay i'm not editing today i'm not shooting in the day but it still you know goes back to the end goal of everything this is to be on top yes <laughs> speaking about the process you were just on the bt experience for the oh yeah <laughs> our, our yeah 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 
How was that? You were one of the finalists, correct? Yes, yes. That was an amazing opportunity, you know what I mean? I like to approach things with no expectations. Like, even when I meet people, just in general, I don't really hold no expectation towards anything. Just so I don't get my little heart broken, you know. I don't know. <laughs> but, nah, uh, it was dope. Uh, like I said, I went with no expectations. Like, it was crazy because I... I was uh, I was in Long Beach and usually it's like an hour away, but it was like no traffic that morning. And I was just like, nigga, this LA ain't no traffic. This God just cleared the path for a young nigga. And right when I was walking up after I had parked, and I and I hate paying for parking, so I hate, I didn't even paid for parking that day. Usually I would circle the block and look for some street parking, my nigga. I'd be like, hold up, you know. But I was like, you know, I'm gonna pay for this parking. I run up right when I run up, so they bring in the people. And I was like, okay, this is really perfect timing, goddamn. Do do do. So <laughs> so you know, I spent my bars um and i was like all right you know we'll see where it goes you know what i mean let's see what happens i'll take some of my homies like yeah i don't know how long it's gonna take i'll probably be done in like two three hours you know because i really didn't know what the fuck to expect so you know after i spent my bars the first it was like oh no nah, bring her back boom brought me back i was like okay bad. I was like, right, it may take a little long in two or three hours y'all y'all just hang tight you know what i mean have fun so you know and then i went back again spent some more bars it's like oh yeah boom she's it she's it bring her in they they named my name first because they had like um they pick six people online on the internet, then they pick four people day of, but you that's the one you had to audition. So that's the part I, I was a part of. And I ended up being picked first. And I ended up knowing one of the judges, but she was just like, shit, I didn't even really have to say shit for you, bro. They told me you first. I was like, all right, bet. That's a bet. So, um, you know, it worked out, spit my bars. Um, uh, like, so yeah, won that, boom, got into like top 10. So that's when they like, took us to the back and asked us all these questions and shit. Shit got real when they took the 10 niggas to the back. It was like, all right, guys, we're going to need you to sign this paper. We're like, niggas was like, paperwork? You know, black people scared of paperwork. <laughs> so you mean, like, yo, I got to read all this and just make a decision right then and there. Some people didn't sign because they felt like, you know what I mean, it was a optional record deal type of situation. It's, it's still under wraps, so it's like some stuff going on. But yeah. That's pretty much what happened. Good things happen. Great things happen from that day. I'm glad I took that trip to LA, boy. Whew, amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. I know that you wrote for Kiki Palmer on her upcoming album. Yes, yes. How yes. did you even fall and stumble into that? Um, shout out to Tasha Couture, you know what I mean? She put it up on Facebook, not Facebook, I'm thinking about Facebook and shit. Facebook the feds. I always, sometimes I catch myself mumbling Facebook, I be like, Facebook. You know what I mean? But yeah, they the feds, just put that out there. But now, <laughs> now, all right, so I see Tasha, you know, she had posted it on her Instagram that she was going to do a writing camp for Kiki Palmer. So I was like, so I submit your best tracks and do 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 do. I was like, bet, say no more. Submit my tracks, I hear nothing back. I was like, damn. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> y'all thought it was about to go up. Smith the track and she was like, hell yeah. Now I hear shit back, y'all. But uh, I, I figured, you know, everybody and their mama was submitting because it's a big opportunity. But everybody who knows me and me being a jack of all trades, I was like, all right, cool. If, if she don't see my email, let me just message her for my production page. <laughs> so I hit her up because, you know, I, I, you know, shooting the videos and stuff. Hit her up like, yo, you know, I'd love to come through, capture the experience. She's like, yeah, bet. All through. Fell through. But the, but the gag is, like Kiki would say, <laughs> I came here to write some shit too, my nigga. So, <laughs> so shout out to Tasha for, um, you know what I mean, even allowing me. Because she could have been like, nah, bro, you doing strictly video. So it's cool as fuck. You know what I mean? She let me do the video. And she, you know, was in the, in the because it was like three different studios, bouncing from studio to studio. That was like, that eh. Because I ended up knowing a lot of the people that was writing. I was like, nah, what you doing here? I was like, shit, you know, I'm just getting in where I fit in. You know what I mean? After like three days of going and, you know, writing on this record writing on it I, I end up writing on a few records because we all just bouncing ideas and me I like to move my mind can't stay in like one place you know what I mean so I end up writing something for an actual record that got placed and let me tell you I was so happy when I got that call man it was beautiful I knew it when she texted she was like yo I said oh shit <laughs> <laughs> niggas don't text you yo if you ain't now you ain't get it right now we actually they ain't gonna hit you it's like yo I was like oh my god and then I guess I ain't text back fast enough she called me it's like guess what I was like oh shit it's happening you know what I mean so yeah that was a great experience man shout out to my nigga Tasha man are there any other milestones that you've hit where you're like whoo what to do baby oh <laughs> um I just 
Like I said, I don't know. I'm, I'm like a real finesse man. It's I don't even it's finesse is such a bad word, but it's really not. When you're from Atlanta, it's like a compliment. You know what I mean? Like, oh, she's finesse boy. So you know, the, <laughs> the finesse in me, I don't finesse my way in so many situations. It don't make no sense, but it's it's a gift. You know what I mean? I always say if you could sneak in the place and still fit in, you know what I mean? You meant to be there, cause you know somebody sneaks somewhere, you be like. That little nigga don't belong. Get them the fuck out of here. But the fact that I've been like, I done snuck and sway in the morning and spit on there. You know what I mean? Technically snuck in that session with Tasha. You know what I mean? <laughs> I done snuck in so many situations. I just, you know, I, I just don't believe in closed doors. You know what I mean? If it's, if it's a closed door, it's another one right there waiting for it to be open. And I'm there. I always open it. And I know how to pick locks too. So, yeah. It's lit. <laughs> Honestly. So you are a mental health advocate. Yeah, yeah. How do you deal with your own mental wellness? Smoke a lot of weed. Um, <laughs> smoke a lot of weed. Sometimes I do self medicate, but um, you know, music is a form of expression. Although expression and healing, like I always say, is two different things. It still helps my healing process with expressing it instead of just keeping it all bottled up. You feel me? So um, I, I I I am planning on like doing a couple more, like how my event was for my uh, single release, where I had a uh, mental health panel with the doctor and stuff. I'm definitely we going to get that back in the loop when college starts back, when everybody go back to school, just do a college tour and stuff, just to keep the conversation going. And I'm also going to be dropping um, this uh, thing called Detox Dialogue that I did with a couple of creators around Atlanta that you know, came to the crib and uh, let me interview them about their, their personal mental health journey and how important it is to talk about it in the community and stuff. So I'm still doing my due diligence on that. You know what I mean? Um, it's something I pride myself on now. It's good to have um, music that actually means something because I, I used to make music out just, you know, for the bitches, and for the niggas and bitches, the hoes, clothes, and all that good shit. You know what I mean? Just the rap. Just your usual shit versus... And I mean, I like the difference between dropping this song versus dropping any other song I had because it's dropping a conversation, it's dropping an experience, it's dropping knowledge versus, all right, I'm just dropping this song, y'all niggas download it, let me know what y'all think. Then after that, <clears throat> by the time you finish dropping that song, everybody looking for the next song versus when you drop something like a conversation like I did with Detox, they looking for the next part of it versus the next song, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Speaking of the next song, what are you creating now? Uh, I am currently taking my motherfucking time. You feel me? Nah. <laughs> look, look at niggas always trying to rush your guy. Look, man, shit. Did you, how many times you listen to Detox? Did you tell five friends about Detox yet? Nah, I'm just talking shit. But, uh, no, I am, um, I am in the studio constantly working on, uh, on, like, new sounds, new ideas, new songs. Even if it's songs where I'm, sometimes I go into a session and I'm writing for somebody else, I'm like, hold up, I may just keep this sauce for myself, you know what I mean? But I am working on my project that all ties into, you know, the topic of mental health and just where I, where my head been at, what I've been on type, type of shit. So it should be coming soon. I'm not giving out no dates. Uh... Yeah, it's, it's dropping soon. Rihanna's? Huh? Sweet butter Rihanna's? Yeah, I'm a Rihanna, y'all. Yeah. I'm a Rihanna. I'm going to push the fuck out this single until this single nigga, somebody special see the single be like, yo, let's throw some money behind her campaign. Because this shit costs money being an artist, man. This is the most expensive shit I've ever did other than Cuff. You feel me? <laughs> 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 okay, well, you some time before it's cuffing season. Oh, man, I'm always cuffing, man. I'm cuffed up now, man. I don't go by no seasons. I hit it three times. We go together. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. <laughs> Especially it's three times in that same month. Yeah, we go together. You know what back, mean? Back. back to back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Definitely go together. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me one thing. What's the best part of Atlanta? What's best the best part. Side? Damn, West Side, of course. West Side, the best side. That's where I'm from. It's on Four Side. I don't feel, you know what I mean? I'm talking about. Uh, best thing about being in Atlanta is just always some shit to get into here, man. You know what I mean? If I wasn't in, I couldn't imagine doing music any other place. I wouldn't be able to finesse or sneak my way in the way into places like I have done. You know what I mean? Like, it, like just imagine me being a rapper in Alabama, nigga. Like, when this way coming to Alabama, my nigga, like, you know what I mean? Like, it'll be a lot more harder. I couldn't imagine my life growing up anywhere else, so. Atlanta's got my heart, you know what I mean? LA about to have me soon, though, so I don't know. <laughs> oh, I support it. I support all of the transition. Thank you, thank you. 
What is one thing that we should be looking forward to, though? Besides your project, because nobody's going to press you here. <laughs> um... I guess I'll drop my hint. You know what I mean? TV, man. You know what I mean? Just look out for that. On the big screen. That's my hint. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me why you're next up. And I'm next up because I'm best up. <laughs> I'm next up just because, man, I, I don't take no for no answers. I'm always grind. I know it would never stop me. You feel me? Um, uh, I'm a part of God's plan, and I know we're taking this shit to the top. So I'm, I'm next up. And I'm the best. And I look good. <laughs> Tell us where we can find you, your music, any of your work, all of that. Y'all can find me on Spotify, you know what I mean? My new single is out, Detox. Make sure you stream it, download it, pass the word, and be on the lookout for me coming to your city real soon. You can always follow me on Instagram at sunny.mf. That's S-U-N-I dot M-F on Instagram or just sunnymf on Twitter. And all that good stuff. Facebook for my family, so I don't even think I can accept no more friends on there. Plus, my shit be too. My aunties be calling my mama like, hey, you see what? You see what Sunny posted? So y'all can add me on there. But, you know what I mean? You can follow me on there too. <laughs> Sunny Solomon. That's it. Thank you.